Hello, everybody, and welcome to Infamous Interviews. Today, our guest is Fred Vogel. He is best known for his August Underground trilogy that came out in the early 2000s. But today, we are going to interview him for his latest film, The Final Interview. So, Fred, how did The Final Interview all come about? Um, I was actually trying to make a bigger project that I've been working on for about six years called Pittsburgh Body Removal. And um, as I was getting closer to making that a reality, the money kind of fell through. And um, I needed to um, I needed to get into something a little smaller, something that I can I can self finance. And um, that's kind of what I did is I came up with an idea. Uh, it was very simple. It was pretty much just two guys having this interview together. And um, I passed my ideas off to my writer, my co-writer, uh, Rebecca Swan. And um, she wrote a really amazing script and it just kind of, it kind of grew from there. Yeah, and the casting is phenomenal in this with, uh, you have Diane Franklin as kind of the head of the news studio that's doing this interview and she is just fantastic in this. How did you get Diane Franklin involved in this project? Um, you know, Diane was is one of my favorite actresses. Uh, the Last American Virgin is one of my favorite movies of all time. Amityville Horror, Better Off Dead. Uh, so the movie takes place in the 80s, and I wanted an 80s icon. And um, I wanted to stay away from the kind of cliche uh, horror icons that are out there. Who, I mean, I love them just as much, but uh, I wanted to have somebody that you know, oh my God, I haven't seen her in forever or something like that. And that's why Diane was like perfect. She happened to be a, f a friend of mine on Facebook, and um, I didn't know how to get in touch with her. But I, I, I reached out to her via Facebook, and I apologized for, you know, hey, I'm so sorry to reach out to you like this, but I have a script that I really think you'd be great for. And uh, she got back to me, and she loved the script, and she was in. And I couldn't have been more happier. I mean, she's a legend, and she's just a wonderful human being. So I'm very happy to have her in the movie. Right. And like I brought up before, you're mainly known for the August Underground trilogy. And while some people in my inner circle may have a huge following around that, somebody like Diane may not know what those movies are. So you may kind of feel like you're spamming her inbox at that point. So how did that kind of go through your head? Like, oh, I hope this doesn't come across as spam or anything like that as well. Uh, you know, I I just I took a shot. Um my producer, he also uh, was kind of backing me and he was the one that helped me get Granger and um, and stuff like that. So if if I wasn't able to get in touch with Diane via Facebook, I think he was going to really he was going to try to help me reach her. Um, you know, it's tough, man. When, you know, those August Underground movies, even though they're 20 years old, um, you know, there's still a big shadow that, you know, is casted on me. And a lot of people think, you know, I only make those really rough, nasty kind of films. Um, so I was a little nervous, of course, um, but you know, again, that was a that was a you know that was a 23 year old Fred, and that, when I was making the final interview, that this is a 40 year old Fred. So um, it was just uh, it was you know it was where I wanted to be, and I I just you know the last movie I made was a movie called Celatersica, and I had uh, Camille Keaton from the original I Spit on Your Grave, so I was just confident to you know to reach out to you know female actresses who I'm a huge fan of and. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm really glad that Diane, you know, wanted to be involved in it. And you got Granger, like you brought up, as the lead in this, and he did a fantastic job. It yeah. had to be really gratifying and satisfying to watch him just oh. nail his character because he embodied that character so well in the final interview. Yeah, no, he was he was fantastic. Um, you know, he uh when i was getting a list of actors to kind of to like to choose from to see you know to audition um you know when his name popped up and i was looking at some of his movies it's like i know this guy but you know he's not the, he's always he's not the lead guy he's always in the, he's in some of the greatest movies but he's always kind of in the background or whatever um but he worked with steven spielberg on uh, in Lincoln. So I was like, oh, you know what? Like how crazy, like this guy's, you know, he works with Steven Spielberg, one of the greatest filmmakers ever. And now he's gonna be working with, you know, Fred Vogel, the guy who made Fox <laughs> Underground. So I thought it was kind of funny, um, but you know what, man? Uh, what a true professional he was. He decided to 
uh, take a train to Pittsburgh so he would have more time to read the script. And, and when he got here, um, I was very fortunate to have a few days of uh, rehearsal time with him and Damien, uh, the guy who plays uh, Darius Tidman, who's the killer. And, um, you know, it was just, it was just really great having, you know, these professionals on this little underground movie that I was making. So, I mean, it was really awesome. Yeah. And the thing I loved about the film is it felt like a seventies film in the best way possible, you know, like the exposition that you did and the exploitation that it kind of felt like, especially yeah. towards the end with Granger's character, just what kind of films did you go to that influenced you as a filmmaker, not just to August underground, but to the final interview and just kind of help shape you as a filmmaker, if any. You know, um, the final interview is a very interesting movie and there's not a lot of movies like it. Um, and like when I was making it, I'm like, man, I never really seen anything that is, you know, kind of like this two man play, you know, being a shot. Um, you know, there's movies like Dinner with Andre and, and, you know, things like that, where it's just pretty much, you know, two characters talking, um, you know, when the script was originally originally written, um, there wasn't uh, the Rhonda character, the Diane Franklin character. But Rebecca needed something. We it was just it was just becoming two you know two talking heads, and we just he knew that she knew that um, we needed to you know add that other character in there, and that really helped it. But you know uh, movies like Taxi Driver, um, all those early you know the look of the movie you know the movie takes place in 1983. <clears throat> yeah. So it was really important to have that look because uh, the movie jumps from like a cinematic look to the videotape look. But I, I knew that I wanted the sets and everything to have that period feel of like, you know, when people think 80s, they think, you know, hypo colors and hot pink and, you know, that kind of 80s. But, you know, really growing up in the 80s in 1983, it was still like the 70s. Yeah. You know, things were very brown and uh, it wasn't it wasn't until, you know, the mid 80s to where, you know it became pop, poppy and MTV-ish. So I wanted to keep it, I wanted to make the movie before that pop. Yeah, and that's what I kind of got, like figured out, like if you look at films from the past that's early in the new decade, they're still mimicking films from the later in the decade previously. So that's kind of why the final interview worked out the way you wanted it to make it look kind of grainy and brown too, being in the early decade, like you said, before it really got off to poppy colors and stuff like that. And how was the casting process to find the killer in this? Because he also embodied the character fantastic as well. Uh, his name is Damien Marusak, and he's been in four of my, in my toe tag movies. He was in uh, Murder Collection, a volume one. He was in Masked, and he was the star of Salatursica. And then um, he was... I, he was the guy that I knew that I wanted to play Darius Tidman. Um, so I remember he had the script for about a year. So it took me a year to get, you know, get the money together and get everything rolling. Uh, so he, you know, he, he had a chance to have that script and he knew that thing frontwards and backwards. And um, it really made uh, filmmaking, you know, a lot easy for me because him and Granger were both off book. So they just, they knew the script perfectly and um, it was, I just had to give very little notes to like what I wanted from those guys because those guys really brought their A-game to the, to the movie. Yeah, and you know, you've been a filmmaker for so long now and we're kind of transitioning to this new golden age of digital media. And like you just put this, the final interview out on a digital copy on the website. So how do you feel from being a filmmaker from the early 2000s when it was all about physical media to kind of the new age that we're transitioning to with, you know, theatrical films having a 45 day window or a 30 month window instead of the traditional 90 day window and major stores like Best Buy almost having no physical media presence now. Yeah, so I love physical media. Um, and I vote, my movies have always been collectible, you know, like yeah. you know, I'm, an under, I'm an underground filmmaker um, and you know, I have, a I have an amazing fan base of, of fans out there who've been following me since, you know, 2001. Um, so I wanted to make sure they had the physical media. So we put together a beautiful three disc collector's edition of the movie 
where it has these beautiful like portrait cards and uh, you know they come in the criterion box i mean it's just a really great set i mean this is actually my first movie that i ever did a digital download to and um I wanted to make sure that we sold a few copies first physical before we started doing the digital download. I know $50 is a lot of money for people um, for the physical media, but it is a collector's piece. There's only yeah. 1,983 of them made. And the thing with my, with my art and my, you know, my movies is, you know, those prices don't go down. I'm very, I'm very <laughs> yeah. fortunate that they, you know, people, you know, they go up um, because there's not many of them. And, um, Again, I like to, you know, I like people who discover me and like go out for the hunt because that's how I was collecting movies back in the day. Is you know, you you have to hunt for something that you really want. Uh, you know, word of mouth and um, you know the way that it spreads and it's it's a little different for me because, you know, social media is just not really my thing and I have a, I'm having a hard right. time uh, promoting that way. You know, where before I would go hit conventions for a year and sell you know a thousand movies in a year. Um, to where now it's a little harder because of obviously with COVID, but still just, you know, it's just not, it's just not what it was. Times have changed for sure. Yeah. And not even that is when you go to conventions, a lot of them have people backing out last minute. And then you have like attendees that may not want to go anymore because those people they look forward to for like months and months have just started backing down like flies. It seems like. Yeah, and, no, it's, it's still, you know, even though it's been, we're trying to get back to normal, it's, it's you know, we're, we've never, our generation, I mean, the, whoever's on this planet right now has never really lived through anything like this before. So we're all just taking it in stride. Nobody wants to be sick. Nobody wants to get people sick. Um, you know, and the thing is, you know, before it was, I mean, man, I remember doing conventions and like passing bottles of booze around, sharing it with everybody, like it was nothing. And that, that era is gone. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's, it's, it's kind of sad, but hopefully, you know, we get back to that and be able, being able to like socialize the way that we used to. And, you know, like you said, conventions was like a huge deal for you when you were first coming out. So what were some of your fondest memories of meeting fans or just going to a convention for the first time? How was that like for you as a filmmaker? Oh, I loved it. Um, so, you know, I grew up going to conventions, the Fangoria Weekend of Horrors and the Chiller Theater. So I was going to conventions in the late 80s into the 90s. Um, and I knew that when I made August Underground that I wanted to hit, the, I wanted to do the, do the convention circuit. Um, there wasn't as many conventions as there are now or were. Um, There's only about three or four. So um, I would hit those three or four and, you know, in the early 2000s, that's really when the convention boom started happening where there more shows were popping up. So, you know, toe tag was going to every one of these conventions and people were meeting me in, in like, Oh my God, you make that really sick movie, but you're kind of nice. And, you know, people <laughs> yeah. were, you know, it was really good for me to go out and meet people instead of having this, you know, the movies had a mystique behind them already, but I didn't have a mystique behind me where people were like, oh, you know, that guy, you know, yeah, he's, he's got to be twisted or he's really evil or whatever. Now that's, just, that's my art. And I wanted people to meet me and be able to socialize with me. And, to, and I take the time um, with my fans and with, you know, fellow filmmakers to, you know, help promote them and champion them because, you know, I know what it's like to not have anybody standing behind me and I've had to like pave my way. So it, it was kind of like my way of going out there for the team and kind of being like, all right, guys, this is, you, you can do this. You can make your own DVDs and sell these. You can go out and promote it. You can be a carnival barker and, you know, have people buy your stuff. And, you know, I mean, look, I look at all the amazing uh, things Totag did. You know, we, we had our own clothing line and, you know, made our own t-shirts and made our own posters. We did everything in house at the time. And uh, nobody was really doing anything like that as a as an underground film company because you know again we're just this itty bitty little niche out there. Um, but you know, Totag definitely made its mark and had a really great run while we did. Right. And speaking of Totag Productions, that became like a staple in horror music that I listened to growing up because of how sick and depraved those films were. And they've always got like references and lines of songs, and that's how. <laughs> I got introduced to the mind of Fred Vogel by not necessarily watching August Underground yet, but I got the references because of the songs. 
and that's how I kind of got into you and followed you on Facebook and then finally watched the final interview. So how does that feel that like people like reference you in songs and all of that as well? It's amazing. Um, and I'm very thankful and I'm very grateful um, that uh, people appreciate my art. You know, I'm, I'm kind of the OG. I've been doing this <laughs> a long time. Um, I'm still making movies. Uh, I was very lucky to make a movie that, you know, grabbed people's attention at the time. There wasn't really anything super disturbing like that at the time. And, and, the, and, the, and the amazing thing with those movies is that, like, they hold up. You know, 20 years later, they still like look like something that you see that, you know, that whole digital look of, you know, videotaping and, and the cinema verite style is very still in. Um, and it hasn't really gone anywhere, even though at the time it was very new. Um, but uh, I'm just, you know, I, I love to inspire, you know, I'm inspired by so much, you know, from from my from music to movies to wrestling to all the stuff that I'm into, all that stuff you know is in a big giant Fred blender, and uh, you know, I love I love to be able to do that for other people too. If I can inspire, we go. Oh, you know what, man? Fred Vogel made that movie for fifteen hundred bucks. I can make a movie for fifteen hundred bucks, or I, you know, his gore inspired me. To, I really want gore effects in my in my movies, or you know, I want to tell these stories. Oh my God, he got that actor in his movie. I can maybe I can reach out to this actor. So that's really where I wanted to be was I wanted to be somebody that was able to influence and kind of like pave the way and show you like, hey, guys, like you can you can reach out to these actors. You know, if you have a really good script and you are professional and you're bringing people onto your set and making sure everybody's safe and you're doing things right, like actors want to act. They, you know, don't be afraid to, to reach out to somebody because, uh, you know, you, you might be able to get them. Right, because how is the saying going? Like everybody's out of your league if you don't take the shot to ask them, right? For sure. I'm sure you do the same thing with your podcast. You know, you have to reach out to people and, you know, you fish and you, sometimes you get a bite and that bite can lead to bigger things, you know? Um, and that's that's how I look at it too, is uh, I always wanted to grow. I, I didn't realize when I made August Underground that I would become like the king of the underground, you know, and make, you know, being... A very prominent character in there. I just I just wanted to make a horror movie. Right. You know, I love special effects. I used to teach at Thompson Meany's Makeup School special effects. That was where my background came from. But I wanted to make movies, and um, you know, I didn't realize that August Underground was going to make such a huge dent in the underground scene. To where, you know, now that I made this this groove, I just wanted I just needed to keep going. And, uh, you know, I was learning as we were going and we're just creating and making great movies. Some people don't even realize that I've made, you know, eight movies, you know, from the August Underground to the Redson Tower, which is one of my favorite movies that I've ever made. Um, the Murder Collection and Maskhead and Cell Tersica and, you know, all the music videos that I've done with Necrophagia. So, um, yeah, I'm just glad to be able to do it. Yeah. And, you know, we got this new wave of filmmaking now with like Facebook being so huge and Indiegogo. So it's kind of like we're getting these new guerrilla filmmakers that probably were inspired by you that did August Underground. And now we got Indiegogo to help, you know, finance them. Have you ever thought of using Indiegogo as one of your uh, means to finance a project? You know, I, I mean, I, it's something that I, I struggled with since the platform came out. Um, I don't want you to make my movies. I make my movies for you, you know? Right. Um, that's kind of, that's how I look at it is like, this is my gift, me as an artist and I'm creating something. I want to be able to create that and give it to you. And then if you like it enough, you give me something, which is money <laughs> <laughs> for, me to, for me to make another movie. Um, so that's kind of why, you know, I'm just constantly in debt because I do, you know, we self-finance everything and we always, try to put out the biggest best product that we can you know the final interview three disc set has a cd a dvd and a blu-ray reversible cover the the cards they're hand packaged they're hand sealed you know they're all handwritten if you if you buy one it's you know you um and if you ask for the personalization there's like a little envelope on there and we, it, we write that to you i mean everything is just so 
personalized. Um, you know, and that's just, you know, that's just something that, you know, we think is just really cool. And like, I, I really want to keep that alive instead of just being a click, you know, so. And do you have any upcoming uh, screenings of the final interview still going on or has that run kind of ended? Well, you know, right now it's a little tough, you know, especially what's going on now. It's the winter time, and there's more drama going on with the, the virus out there. Um, I didn't get a chance to do the screenings that I wanted to do. Like the movie started playing film festivals and was doing really well, but then film festivals stopped and it all became watching online. And I made a movie for the first time that I really wanted you to see on the big screen. You know, like Granger's, those actors' faces are beautiful and I wanted them to be on a big movie screen and not just on your computer on your laptop. So I'm hoping once the dust settles a little bit more, I can have some more, pro you know, more little independent screenings here in Pittsburgh or wherever, or if people want to show it, um, I'd be happy to, you know, come out and screen the movie. So I definitely like to do more screenings for sure. Yeah. And you know what, if you ever looking for a screening in uh, my side of town in Charlotte, North Carolina, we got this uh, local video store that has kind of a mezzanine and it's like a backdrop projector they got. And it's a really cool intimate space that holds like 30 to 35 people. And it's amazing to watch the screen on that. No, for sure. Well, Fred, do you have any upcoming projects you want to talk about? Um, you know, right now, so I, I work uh, for the local IATSE 489 union. So I'm working on, I just got done doing a television show for, Amazon called Sprung and I'm actually just starting a new movie um, next month you know if that's my job job um, but for my next project I'm, I have a few I have a few projects that I've been working on again it's just, it's just really hard to get that money together and keep people safe you know I don't want to make yeah. a I don't want to bring people in and make a movie and get anybody sick especially because like you know, working for Netflix or Amazon, the, the protocols we do with COVID is so huge. The money those companies spend to keep everybody safe is something that I don't have. And just to make a movie right now would be selfish of me, you know, to get somebody sick because I just, oh, I got to make this movie right now. Um, I don't make movies just to make movies. You know, my movies, I've, you know, I've made eight in my, in my 20 year career. Um, which I think is a pretty fair share of films to make in, in 20 years, and especially quality movies. I really, you know, I really try to make them the best that I can, I can make. Right. Uh, so I don't mind waiting, you know, and I hope my, and my, and my fans don't mind waiting because they know they're going to get something special from me. So whatever it is, it's going to be awesome. I just can't wait to, you know, get it going when I can. All right, Fred. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Infamous Interviews today. It's been a pleasure finally seeing you face to face, man. Oh, thank you. All right, have a great day. You too.